What are we going to make together? A rosy wallet. The rosy wallet can be made in three different sizes. In the pattern you will see all the explanations for the three different sizes. The mini, this is what the mini looks like on the inside. We have a clear vinyl pocket, a zipper pocket, two slip pockets, a slip pocket on this side and four card pockets. The normal and the maxi, they have on the inside two clear pockets, a zipper pocket, two slip pockets, on the other side a slip pocket and ten card pockets. It's very easy to exchange the clear vinyl pocket for another short card pocket. Look in the pattern for the short card pocket and just place it here. They all look the same. The difference between the maxi and the mini and the normal is just half an inch. It all depends on what clasps you have. I prefer the clasps with end caps. Not all clasps have them. I explain everything in my pattern as if your clasps have end caps. It's important so you can really really finish nicely the top of your wallet if your clasps have no end caps. As you can see, these wallets are super easy and once you know how to make them, you can make them in two hours. Ideal for production sewing. The preparation of the card pockets. Take them long side, fold them in half lengthwise, press. Open up, take your card pocket stabilizer, place it centered on the seam. Fold your card pocket close, then you are absolutely sure that your stabilizer is not in the fold, so it's, it's not folded on the stabilizer and press. And repeat this for all four. For the slip pockets, we fuse the interfacing centered on the fabric. and fold in half. This is the binding for the vinyl pocket. Fold it in half. Press. Open.
fold the raw edges lengthwise towards the crease we just made and press we are going to make bias binding So if you want to use ready-made binding, please go ahead. This is my main lining. I've used already one piece of woven interfacing on top of it and one layer of decoville. Since I'm using micro suede for my outer, I've used one layer of fusible interfacing, the complete width of my fabric and one layer, an extra, a double, a second layer. And a second layer of woven interfacing, but just seven and a half wide. Seven and a half, that's if my clasps are seven and a half. And that is all the preparation done. A quick recap. Why do we need two slip pockets interfaced? four car pockets with the stiff stabilizer, one short car pocket interfaced, the vinyl, the vinyl binding, everything for the coin pocket, our main lining interfaced and with decoville, and our exterior fabric. What do we do? We top stitch all the slip pocket, the four card pockets, and the card pocket short. Top stitching at one eighth of an inch on the fold. My machine is a Pfaff Expression 3.5. It has a built-in walking foot, like you can see. If you don't have a walking foot on your machine, I suggest that you get one. I also change stitch, then you have less thread to cut. With all the top stitching done, we're now going to press. Very important that after every 
time you top stitch that you set your thread in your fabric. If you adjust press every time I say, you will see that your final result will get better. It's not that hard. Every time you, you, you stitch, you top stitch, you just press. We're now going to draw the guidelines. We draw the guidelines on everything except the card pocket short. So we also draw the guideline on the slip pocket we did not top stitch. On the fold you draw the guideline and the guideline is 3 eighths of an inch from the fold. And do this on everything. You can be minimal and do it like this, or you can draw the complete line. I would suggest for you first, you draw the complete line, and then you can do what you think will be best for you. So. And then on the four normal card pockets, we draw a line 7 8 of an inch from the raw edge at the bottom. This will be a stitching line. So on this line we stitch, on this line we place. It will become clear later on. On your card pocket short, you open it and on the inside, so the wrong side of your fabric, you draw a line that is one fourth inch from the bottom. This will also be a stitching line. Constructing of the card pockets. Take your slip pocket that has no top stitching on it. Fold it open with the guideline facing you. So you first, when you have you, your guideline, and then your fold. When it's folded closed, you see the guideline, you leave it in this direction, and you just flap the bottom layer to the top. Take one card pocket normal and place it exactly on the line. Clip the place. And stitch on the line at the bottom. Take a second card pocket and place it exactly on the line. Click in place and stitch on the line at the bottom. Take your 
shirt, card pocket, place it exactly on the line. And stitch on the bottom line. You know the drill by now. Take your fourth card pocket, place it on the line, and stitch on the bottom line. some seams here at the bottom. Lift up the top layer. We are not going to mess with that one. So clip away. We cut away fabric. It does not have to be neat at all. It's even a benefit if it's not. But it's important that you cut one layer at a time because they cannot be all at the same position we keep this layer as well so we fold the top layer back and it's like nothing has happened take your card pocket short and place it exactly on the line. Clip in place. Flip the top layer of the card pocket short up. Clip it out of the way. We are now going to stitch one fourth inch from the bottom. We drew a line there, remember? This is done. Flip your back layer back. We now need to top stitch the slip pocket. So we just stitched our card pockets. The total width is now 8 inches. If your clasp is 8 inches, this is perfect. Our clasp is 7.5. So what do I do? I measure 7.5 and I trim. I can do it all on one side. but. I would advise you not to. While sewing the card pockets, you will have a little bit of difference on every side. So trim a little bit on one side. So everything is now very straight here. And then measure seven and a half and trim the other side. 
now we have both very straight edges. Is that not, not important for the 8 inch clasps? It's less important because the sew allowance for the 8 inch clasps is 3 8 For the 7.5 clasps it's 1 fourth. Now we need to measure the center, 7.5 divided by 2. That's three and a half, three, three fourth. And we're going to stitch in the middle from bottom up. stitch the sides from the bottom towards the top. For this side we just flip our piece. So this side of the wallet is done. Now we are preparing the vinyl pocket. For that we need our binding. We prepared it already, so it is really a binding. To make sure it will not shift while we are stitching it, I use some glue. Yes, I prefer to use a lot of glue why I am making handbags and wallets. We are not making delicate quilts. Now top stitch at one, four, uh, one eight inch from your vinyl. Take your uh, coin pocket front, place your vinyl at the, aligned with the bottom of this and clip in place. Never ever use pins when you're using vinyl. And baste. Also going to divide these final pockets. In total our width is still 8 inches, so our dividing line is
we have stitched, but of course we are not going to press because this is vinyl and vinyl will melt if you touch it with your iron. Take your lining of the coin pocket, use some glue, and a zipper. So the zipper pull is on the left and upward. Take your prepared vinyl pocket, turn it so the vinyl is still on top and with some glue on the zipper Place it here. So the zipper is sandwiched between our two fabrics. The zipper teeth are facing upwards and the pull is on our left. both layers of fabric down away from the stitch length uh, away from the stitch since we are using vinyl we can't press here so I have to do the next back, back thing the next best thing and that's using my hero marker. Top stitch, one eight inch from the zipper. fabric and move your coin pocket up. Take a little bit of glue and glue the lining good. Flip again, take the inside of the slip pocket, that will be the back of our zip pocket, add some glue, and place this fabric right side down on top of the zipper. So this is what we have now. Stitch one fourth inch. Stretch your fabric away from your zipper, so over your stitch. We're still using the vinyl, so the hero marker. 
and top stitch the same amount as you did on the other side. Now fold the inside of your slip pocket over your zipper. So we are sandwiching our zipper. Base stitch the bottom. Take your slip pocket and place the top of your zip pocket aligned with the guideline we made. Baste stitch the bottom. Are done with our coin pocket. What do we do? We measure three and three fourth inch from our stitching line. Three and three fourth. And here we trim. For this side it's very important that you move your zipper pull towards the inside. Um, I need to make sure my zipper pull is not falling off. Three and three fourth. And now we base stitch the sides, here and here. The zipper pole is in the middle. Our main lining, take your coin pocket and align the bottom with the bottom of your main lining. Clip in place. Turn your main lining, take your card pockets. Align the bottom and clip in place. We're now going to waist stitch those card pockets to our main lining. Completely around.
<clears throat> that's done. Now it's time to place our exterior onto Rosie. Take your outer fabric and turn it right side down. If your outer fabric is seven and a half, you're going to draw lines that are one fourth inch from the edge. If your wallet is eight or four and a half, then you need to draw lines that are three eight inch. You would think this is a square, but this is not a square. So make sure that you draw the lines on the sides. So this is the top, this is the bottom, And this is 9 inches. Let's measure if I'm correct. Yep, 9 inches and 8 and a half. This was just perfect. Take your wallet right side up, take the outer right side down and start aligning one side of the outer to one side of the lining. Turn. Your outer is wider than your lining. That's on purpose because our outer will self-bind our lining. But align the raw edges. And we are now going to stitch on those lines one fourth inch from the outside. This will not be possible with a normal needle. So I'm going to change my Microtex needle. With my super strong universal 16, 18 by 100. You can use a jeans needle. As long as you have a fresh needle, everything will be okay. We are stitching through a lot of layers. So, put your machine on slow. The back stitch at the start and the beginning.
Now comes the most important thing in this wallet. And that's where a lot of people struggle with. Fold away your exterior fabric. Do not touch your exterior fabric. Do not touch at all. We are going to trim our lining. That's the most of layers. That's our lining and all the pockets on it. Do not trim your exterior fabric. I cannot stress this enough. Do not trim your exterior fabric. But do trim away your lining. And that is a lot of layers. So you will need good sharp fabric scissors. Now we need to turn our wallet inside out. And here you see how our outer is cell of binding is binding our lining. This is vinyl, so please do not touch with your iron. You do not want to encounter a uh, pressing accident at this point. This looks fine, right? So, we're now going to test drive our clasps. When I buy clasps, I screw the little screws in it to make sure that I do not lose them. If you buy the clasps from a reputable store, they will have a protective film over them. Leave the film on it as long as possible. That's another headache you will not have to endure. So, let's test if we cut away enough of the lining. Will our wallet fit? So, let's test if we cut away enough of the lining, if our wallet will fit. Yes, this looks perfect. So we can continue. Fold your wallet in half and while you have it in half, we are now going to zigzag stitch each end. Why do we do this? Because our exterior will have to 
fold over a lot of layers on the inside. When doing it like this, we give it a little give. So by now zigzag stitching, we will give it around 130 to 130 second of an inch to, to the give. You will not see it, but you will see it on the end result. side we do the same one side will have the closure with the hole I prefer to have this one on the bottom of my wallet you do not have to fear that your cards will fall, fall out. We made sure they are really snug here. So, Push your fabric in it. We need to find where we need to make the hole. I use these little things. I will link in the video where you can buy them. They are for sale on eBay. They do not cost a lot. They will make your life so much handy. They come in a box with a lot of different sizes. So if you are serious in bag making or if you are serious in making holes in fabric or in leather, then these are really the bomb. The other thing you need is a cutting board and an old fashioned hammer. You can see this is not a fresh one. The best way to do this is to place this thing on the ground, literally, because this will give a lot of bounce and you cannot do it on a bouncing table. Take a cutting board that can be damaged because you will damage it. To glue the clasps, the metal, to your fabric, we need a special glue. I use Gutterman Creative HD2. It's hard to find this one in the United States, so you can use E6000. It's exactly the same, they tell me. So, how do you use the glue? Add glue 
on the inside of the clasps. Not too much, but enough. It's a slow drying glue, so when we applied it, we need to let it dry for a couple minutes. Take your clasps, make sure your uh, screw holes are on the inside, place your fabric inside the clasp, With your awl, we drill screwing holes. With a screwdriver PH00, you can find this in a hardware store. Take your screws and screw them in. one side. For the other side we repeat. Take your clasp with the screw holes on the inside. Push your fabric in. much to the top as possible. Redrill holes. Screwdriver screws. your wallet is ready. If you're worried about the inside of this hole, what you can do is take a um, fabric pen and color it a little bit. I was not worried because all my fabric was dark, but you can do this before you have touched the clasp. Now 
we can start importing our money.